before we kind of begin the song, we're reminded that next Wednesday is marks one of the historic events in the history of our country. 9-11 and the uh, largest attack on American soil that we've ever experienced. One of the things that came out of that at the time was we witnessed everyone uh, on TV or wherever they were praying together. There was this turning to God and, and, and really looking inside to see what was going on. Every politician, almost every religion would share a common ground. And there was a lot of prayers being offered up, praying together. All of that lasted about two weeks. And then we got back to the bickering and the power grabs and forgot who we had been speaking with before. So I want to share a couple of things with you before we do the song. First of all, I'm reading, and this is not a Bible passage, but it sounds like it. And in so much as we know that by His divine law, nations like individuals are subjected to punishments and chastisements in this world. We have been the recipients of the choices and bounties of heaven. That's we in this country. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these things were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with broken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power, to confess our national sins and pray for clemency and forgiveness. These are the words of Abraham Lincoln, spoken in 1863 at the height of the Civil War, on March 30, 1863. They had declared that day as a day of humiliation, fasting, and prayer. And finally, from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who is raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sorrow? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you. 